Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. And welcome to the month of October. My favorite month. Though I like November as well. Today we are honoring a saint named Remigius. He was Bishop of Rems and he died somewhere around the year 530. Remigius, also known as Remy, he was he's one of the patron saints of France. He was born somewhere around 438 and um, was made a bishop of Rems at the age of 22. Noted for his learning and holiness of life, Remigius is chiefly remembered because he converted and baptized King Clovis the Franks on Christmas Day in 496. This, as you'll hear, is a um, he is a particularly important uh, event in the history of Christianity. This event changed the religious history of Europe. Clovis by becoming Catholic instead of Arian, um, as were most of the Germanic people, um, was able to unite the Gallo-Roman population and their Christian leaders behind his expanding hegemony over the Germanic rulers of the West and to liberate Gaul from Roman domination. His conversion also made possible the cooperation the Franks gave later to Pope Gregory the Great in his evangelistic efforts for the English. No doubt Clovis's motives in accepting Catholic Christianity were mixed, but there is no doubt about the sincerity of his decision, nor of the important role of Remigius in bringing it to pass. When Clovis was baptized together with 3,000 of his followers, Remy gave him the well-known charge, worship what you have burned and burn what you have worshipped. So today we open, we honor Remigius, Bishop of Rems. With that, we'll begin our uh, service this morning on 78 and then move quickly to page 80. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Now we will say together, together the Venite found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm. This morning, we will read Psalms 97 and 99, starting on page 726, whole verse responsively. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. 
bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Turning the page, we will read Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the prophet Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, O people of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or kindness and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, killing, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bonds, and murder follows murder. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish, and also the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend, and let none accuse. For with you is my contention, O priest. You shall stumble by day. The prophets shall also stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and requite them for their deeds. They shall eat but not be satisfied. They shall play the harlot but not multiply because they have forsaken the Lord to cherish harlotry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will read canticle 13, found on page 90, a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. And when we had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos, 
and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Padua. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload its cargo, and having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. Through the Spirit, they told Paul not to go to, on to Jerusalem. And when our days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey, and they all, with wives and children, brought us on our way till we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and bade one another farewell. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Ptolemaeus, and we greeted the brethren and stayed with them for one day. On the morrow, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. And he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for some days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this girdle and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, The will of the Lord be done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Canticle 18, found on page 93, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and besought him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And he stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing, as Moses commanded, for a proof to the people. But so much the more the report went abroad concerning him, and great multitudes gathered to hear and to be healed of their infirmities. But he withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. On one of those days, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they sought to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before, before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, who is that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? When Jesus perceived their questioning, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise and walk? 
but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, take up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose before them and took up that on which he lay and went home, glorifying God. And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, turning to page 96, we will affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, by the teaching of your faithful servant and bishop, Remigius, you turn the nation of the Franks from, frame, from vain idolatry to the worship of you, the true and living God, in the fullness of the Catholic faith. Grant that we who glory in the name of Christian, the name of Christian, may show forth our faith in worthy deeds through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the Church, for our Anglican Communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Jebba within the Church of Nigeria, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sean, our presiding bishop elect, for our Diocese of Maine and our Bishop Thomas, for the Congregation of St. Andrew in Winthrop, for the reverent care of all the world as we continue to observe the season of creation, and for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Claire, Patricia, 
David, Kent, Lloyd, Eric, Heather and her family, Ava, Bill, Ciro, Dustin, Hunt, Harvey, and Corky. We offer continued prayers for Yasmin, Marlene, Sophia, Kara, Dolores, Pang, Patricia, William, Susan, Kathy, John, Jenny, Kelly, Bob, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. And we pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations and for peoples and places of violence or oppression. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, Lebanon, and elsewhere in the Middle East. And for the many other places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, particularly for those suffering the effects of Hurricane Helene. We pray for our enemies and for those who wish us harm, and we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan and Angus, Shelley and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those for responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Reagan, Jackson, and Tobena. And we pray for the departed, for Barry Beatty and Jerry Lewis, for victims of Hurricane Helene, for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let us say together the general thanksgiving, found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts who may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope that you'll be able to join us again soon, perhaps as soon as tomorrow morning. 
in the meantime, um, may we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of, re of reflecting that presence out into a very needy and very hurting world. And may we all take advantage of this glorious, glorious month of October to enjoy the leaves and the cool air and the blue skies um, as we prepare ourselves for other type of weather. But in the meantime, it is, um, I've been told, peak season already up north, uh, like in the Greenville area. And therefore, we don't want to miss the glory of it. So keep those eyes open. With that, may God bless us all this day. See you soon.